전투를 시작합니다. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if Team Redemption can uh, have a better draft here. They will have first ban. They're going to ban Thrall immediately. Wow, they're just like really afraid of Thrall. Um, and they get first pick here. So, okay, it is an Uther counter ban. I think that's because of the map too in the Spider Queen. Like, Uther is a character that really enables heroes like Kerrigan to be super powerful here. Yeah, even ETC, you know. Um, I think we're going to yeah. see Kael'thas taken here like 100% though. I think it would yeah. be a huge mistake and a huge waste to not. He's just too strong here. Like, there's, it's so much about clearing those web weavers quickly, uh, clearing those waves quickly as well. Like, his damage late game, the chain bombs. Kael'thas' win rate, what is it right now? It's like insane. It's like, it's like 91 90, or 92, I think, or something yeah, like that. 92%. Like, I, and like, as anyone who plays the game, well, I mean, Zagar is always valued very highly here as well. I can't, I can't really trash on that. I can't trash on that either. Um, but it's going to give, obviously, immediately, Hero is going to take Kale, and they will probably take Taronda at this moment as well. I would say, there's a high so. chance. I think so. I think so. I mean, super valuable on this map, even more so than the previous map. So I think they will take this opportunity. She just yeah, such a good, good hero. Yeah, look 90. at that. 90. 90 percent so far in Super League. And from my estimation, <laughs> not quite that high in Hero League, but pretty, pretty damn close. Probably number one on Hot Slugs right now, I would say. I haven't checked in a few days, but I mean, it's probably rising up there. Uh, they do grab the Taronda, so there you go. Yeah, the thing is, is it going to matter that they see this coming with Creep? <laughs> it's like, already, look at, the, look at this draft for Team Hero. Like, these are the two super valued heroes, I guess, right now. The two that are like, okay, we need nerfs. Let me get, uh, oh, Grey Mane's going to get taken by Redemption as well as they're going to take Tastar, which is a great, um, is a great hero on this map for the vision he gives, but I don't know if you need Tastar with Zagara. An interesting early pick here. Oh, that's kind of, kind of different. I really wasn't expecting the, the Tastar this early on, or, yeah, I don't know, it's just I was, I just, like, looking at this, I look really deep and go, in for Korea, if you're burning bonus pool on first pick, that's a problem, you know? Like, that means you're not really, you don't really have a 100% idea of what you're going to do. Yeah. Uh, whereas a lot of the actual top teams out here, like, last year I actually had MVP Black mapped out almost to the last pick where I just know exactly how the draft would go because they just already have it pre-planned. They're like, okay, we know exactly how to draft on such and such a map. Yeah. Well, Johanna does get banned over here, taking out uh, the tank that is probably the most stun resistant, which makes sense considering they already are very stun heavy. Uh, with the ETC ban here, there is a high likelihood we will see Diablo picked up from Hero. Uh, I think yeah. there's a really high chance of that, <laughs> and he's picked up next. Yeah, of course. It, I would have preferred a Diablo one, but the thing is, they aren't taking stuns over on Redemption side, uh, and without Without uh, stuns, ETC is too strong. Sonya's going to come along with Diablo. I think uh, Team Redemption will definitely need a second support here to deal with the CC of Hero. You've got gravity laps, lunar flares, Diablo's tosses. I mean, this every, is a mess. Every hero on Team Hero is like a tier one hero with a stun. Uh, this is getting a little bit out of hand. <laughs> I think you need cleanse versus this composition, and the Tastar pick, Absolutely. I think, was taken way too soon. Um, this is just a, I feel like there's a clear draft superiority for Hero right now between yeah. this last game and even I, more so in this game. Could the Tastar draft have been a counter pick because they used it last time with Taronde? I suppose maybe, but I just, I can't really, yeah, I don't know. I can't really agree with it. Um, and again, they're going to burn some more of their bonus pool here. I think I think they need to grab a strong warrior. Like, are we going to see our first Leoric? <laughs> um, I, Muradin, they, I guess, will probably go first. Yeah, yeah, I think they absolutely have to have a Muradin. I don't even know what else they really go for here. Uh, maybe a, a Tyrael or something? Yeah, I, I suppose a Tyrael would be terrible. Um, I think a second support was something that they can't fit into their draft anymore, but if they don't take one, they're missing cleanse versus this comp that will stun them to death. Like, this map has stun meta written all over it, and that mm. comp for Team Hero, like, seals the deal, signs the paper. It says, like, we will show you at least 50 stuns this game. Like, <laughs> um, um, you know, I could see. Yeah, 
I don't know. God, this is, it's so... I mean, I'm like, looking at this, I'm like, maybe... Maybe you pick, I mean, I'm just trying to grasp what straws, like, you pick another great tank and you really just try yeah, to use poke. That's why I was saying, like, maybe Tyrael. Uh, I mean, a noob has a lot of CC as well, but Tyrael, like, Sanctification can be, like, a very clutch play. It is going to be Leoric, though. Okay. I mean, I, I had a feeling, but I just... This this draft looks weak to me, like, very much so. It, it does. I, I, I do agree. Team Redemption, both games are looking a little bit shaky on the draft. The thing is, the metagame is still changing a bit, so... But, I mean, I'll just look over at Team Heroes' side. I'm like, ooh, aren't, like, two of those heroes maybe going to be banned? Like, or at least split onto different teams? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say the last hero here for Team Hero is probably going to be um, an auto-attacker. Um, I wouldn't even be too surprised yeah. to see Raynor picked up here. Yeah, I think Raynor would be a cool pick. Um, Could see Bala. Choice. Yeah. yeah, Bala's got, like, very nice wave clear as well, so... Oh, Karazim, so they do want that second that second healer there. Karazim is considered in Korea by many uh, pro gamers um, to be actually a counter to Leoric and Johanna because of his seven-sided strike, so I think there's a high chance we're going to see him take that and yeah, not Divine yeah. Palm. I, I definitely think you're right on that. Divine Palm I don't think is needed here, but against that double tank, makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, well, the drafts are set. Pretty unique ones here again in Korea. We're going to go into Tomb of the Spider Queen for game number two in just a moment. Team Redemption, see if they can redeem themselves. Look at that Kale Thos portrait. We see one every day. <laughs> I like it. As we should. Kale Thos oh. haunts my dreams at this point. It's 100% pick ban rate in this tournament. All right, guys, let's go into game number two to see if Redemption can redeem themselves. Game two, here is spawning on the blue side. And we are gonna see uh, Darvish playing Sonya again. Magi on Karazim this time. Yep, and uh, looks like Wujay will be going ahead and playing that Taronda. Um, all right, I mean, the same, same player again on Grey Main here with Coconut Milk. Hopefully he can get something done this game. Looks like we do have the Pokeo build here for Toronto, most likely. And damage for Karzim's trait. So. Okay, that's cool. You know, that makes a lot of sense, having two healers here, uh, to put that extra damage on him to be able to help take down these tanks a little bit quicker. Uh, I like it. Yeah, I like it too. And he still puts out, like, very nice healing numbers if you do take the damage trait. He does. Um... We are going to see reanimation taken from Leoric as well as you would expect. By the way, uh, much better at choosing their mounts here for Team Hero as well. Just winning in every way. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, last game I wasn't, I didn't have as much of a problem with how the draft ended up for Redemption. Just how they did it seemed very weak. It left them with a lot of holes. Uh, in this last game, I, I want to go back to, I mean, just the, the first pick is usually so set. Like, if you're not sure about that one, Unless they do some crazy ban, and mm. that's that's another story. But the bans are normal. If you don't know what your first pick is, that's like that's that screams insecurity, like in the team, or like some sort of miscommunication or something. Um, a lot of hesitation on that first pick is scary to see. All right. Well, looks like uh, they are going to town. Nice jump out there by Muradin. Uh, it's going to obviously be very hard to kill early on, but very quick lane clears and very quick rotations coming down here by Team Hero. Yeah. We just see Conjurer's Pursuit taken from Tastar, so he's probably going to be rotating a bit to get those extra globes and he can provide uh, support as he bounces between the lanes. There's really not a whole lot of way to deal with all the stuns for heroes, so Redemption is going to have to play very defensively in the early game. We're not going to see them try to make any big gank moves. Although, as I say that, they are going to move over here on Sonya, but not going to find much. Yeah, it looks like Darvish just a little bit too smart for that. Staying back, staying mounted. Uh, you know, if you don't see anyone, stay mounted if you're all alone. It's a good tip for people watching out there. Yeah. 
pretty much stay mounted all the time if you're not doing anything. But in this case, like, don't even go into the into the wave. Just stay back there. By the way, uh, just the coordination of this hero team is really awesome. Like, we just saw Karazim go ahead and just auto-attack each minion, like, once to twice to make sure that the flame strike just wiped them all out. So you see how quickly they're working together and clearing waves. And uh, something I believe you were talking about the other day where uh, a lot of people are in Korea are saying this is a wave clear meta, yeah, not a stun meta. Exactly. This kind of shows you uh, part of why. Like, look at this. They're clearing the waves so quickly. Well, hold on. We actually do have a little bit of a battle now. It doesn't look too much will go down. Dimension shift out for Tassar. But the, the speed with which they are clearing these waves allows them to rotate so much faster than their opponents that they're in complete control. It's like you don't necessarily need creep tumors Especially on a map like this, if you're clearing the wave and go down and clearing the other wave, you see them clearing, so you see where they are. Yeah, it's um, it's and, and even beyond that, the only weakness to rotation and ganking constantly is that you lose exp. But if you have all waves pushing, all waves cleared all the time, you have exp efficiency. And when you're ganking, if you fail, you didn't miss anything. You just go back, and while you're doing that, you scare them out of lane, and they may miss exp. So it's really important to have every lane cleared efficiently, and we're going to see that uh, throughout this early game here. Yeah. yeah. Well, looks like they are looking for a bit of a gank here. Looks like Murden does start to come in. They do go ahead and go after Coconut Milk here on Gray Main. Does get to roll out. Close call there. You know, we could just see how much, you can know, see how powerful this stun composition really is um, when you see it kind of linked together mm. like that. Um, and we saw, like, in the first engagement, they hit. Uh, Leoric and Atas are both who have excellent escapes from that. So you can see they almost had a problem there, but <laughs> even with like the two best heroes in their composition that can escape. Yeah. Uh, um, now, one thing I do want to mention is Team Redemption is actually keeping up. Okay, this looks like it's being dominated by Team Hero, and it should because they really have the composition that early on in this game, you're not going to be able to really leave your tower area. But we have like a full soak going on by Team Redemption. So that's definitely... That's a good thing for them. The thing is, getting an actual full turn in is going to be extremely hard. Yep. Grabbing Darvish here, not able to do it, trying to. Um, the turn in does go to Hero, and right before that, it was coordinated. Karazim, with his damage build, actually was able to take the bot camp. So that's actually pushing the bot lane with these web weavers, which makes that push very difficult to deal with. Yeah, seriously, that is actually kind of a deadly one there. And it looks like, actually, they do get a nice kill here on Darvish. Yeah, Darvish sticking around, you know, there just way too long. I think the support coming up a bit later than he expected. He kind of just sat under the spider there. Um, but all lanes are pushed very heavily here. Yeah, definitely a big advantage. A still here for Team Hero as far as the map goes, especially in that bottom lane where Zagar is having a hard time clearing everything. Yeah, she really is, especially with those mercs down there. Now, two Spiderlings are basically gone now, and they are just going to try to protect this mid one uh, and push down this fort. Good positioning here by Anka. Every time I see it, I want to say Orca, but <laughs> Anka <laughs> up at the front, like, you know, life stealing, slowing everybody, and also protecting uh, Coconut Milk because he's the most vulnerable target right now. Yeah, and uh, we do see the, the full uh, Gilnean cocktail, that's such a weird word, Yeah. Uh, build here for our gray main player, Coconut Milk. So that's really what is common right now. That's going to give him a lot of range and really quite a bit of damage as we move forward. As you can see, they are going to commit to this fort. They do have one giant helping to support. And it looks like Redemption sees blood in the water here. They are going to try to engage. But here is uh, Swoy is going to jump in. He actually will be killed here almost 100%. Look at this. St. Tail comes down as well. All and there's right. a kill on Kael Thos. Very nice. We do finally see them fighting back here. And in fact, they do take a small experience lead here. They're getting a strong turn in there. They summon the Web Weavers. Ah, things starting to look much better for them. Yeah, really, really much so. Taking an EXP lead even. I think that we saw a bit of overconfidence yes. on Hero's <laughs> movements there. I, I, I so agree with you there. Swoy, like, the fact that he dived in as five were chasing them to flip Zagara into stuns was like... He was also no, like it was it was overconfidence. You you said it right. There's no no better word for me <laughs> to say here. <laughs> he was also like at one third um, health or so when mm -hmm. that happened too. So he was not in a position to do that, um, relying on I guess his opponent's fear of him. And we are seeing a lot more confidence from Redemption in this game than we saw last game. Yeah. 
Um, well. Looks like it's going to be 10 just barely early for Redemption here before uh, Hero gets it. Yeah, very nicely done for them. Definitely seeing a lot better play out of them this game. Uh, they've really taken it slowly and are doing a good job. Looks like the uh, other lanes have been cleared out, so they're going to have to come up here and try to save this fort. I'm not sure they're going to be able to. And oh, we we did, oh my god, we see uh, Entomb here as well on Onko, mm. but I think he went a bit overzealous on that one. Yeah, that's... Um, like, Leoric loses a duel against against Sonya, so that was kind of interesting. But they do end up taking out Leoric while the rest of Team Redemption does run back. Yeah, and uh, there was no way to capitalize on... Two moves were made in that last team fight. One was Zagara's Maw going down and capturing most of the team, but they were on the ret retreat, so it was a defensive Maw. The other move was the Entomb, which he was he did it alone. There was a miscommunication clear on his team. I think he thought they were coming in with him, and they certainly were not, so yeah. that was totally wasted. Like, to go behind the fort this early in the game would be very, very dangerous anyways. Like, not necessarily for Leoric, but just to remind everyone, Sonya came back into the meta as a counter for Leoric. So for Leoric to solo her, like, I guess at like level 20 he can with Spectral Leech and, and like a built out W, but uh, absolutely not in this situation. Like Sonya will just trash him and that's kind of what we saw there. Yeah, never really even going to want to be your normal Intune target. You definitely want to go for someone like Karazim or Kael'thas. Yeah, um, those would be, especially Kael'thas I would say here. Karazim might be able to jump out if his Q is on, on cooldown, but uh, yeah, that was that was really weird. <laughs> yeah, both teams definitely showing some nerves here today, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, a very even game nonetheless. And as you can see, keep a close eye on Greymane because he does build out very well into the late game. We saw that yeah. yesterday. And uh, okay, this Ooh. is a much better grab. They are going to get Kael'thas this time. Avatar goes down. We use the seven side strike trying to push them back. Really solid in tune there, and they actually do get a maw off as well here onto Swoy, but he's gonna pop out and be completely fine. Here we go, a nice flip right there, and is that coconut milk just blowing up? Yeah, blowing up that apocalypse, really helping to chain the stunts together. Anka's gonna be the next. I think everyone else will escape, but with these two kills, they will be able to push down this fort, maybe even grab these cannon towers as well. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't even mind to have uh, Magi go down and grab that Merc camp, that bottom siege camp right now. Um, you know, he, he's shown already that he can solo that. Yeah, it could be cool. Looks like they're going to go ahead and turn in for the time being. Well, no, I guess not completely. Darvish not actually turning in his gems. They do go ahead and clear the lane, though. They are the first to 13, and this is going to give them a big power spike here on Kael'thas getting Chain Bomb. I think the, um, the level 13 Ancient Spear upgrade for Sonya is quite important as well. And we do see that seven-sided strike is very powerful. That actually changed the battle. You know, when you see that go down, mm -hmm. you actually really have to back off. If one of your tanks is too far forward and he becomes the solo target of that, it's just tons of damage every time. Yeah, yeah. It really helps to, to soften up and sometimes blow up tanks as well. So very cool to see that used as a counter to this double tank. But right. I do have to say, I, I'm liking Coconut Milk's play so far. We're seeing these cocktails actually do lots and lots of damage so far. Yeah, that's like what we were about to talk about before that fight happened, but he's always poking its scales weight level into the late game. And uh, that's really what he's going to be focusing on here is just getting that splash damage off. He's already got the explode and uh, explode on, like, not hit, like it explodes whether you hit a target or not. So that's going to allow him to basically always have that cone of damage. That upgrade's basically just a huge range upgrade. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Um, now, we do see all these shields going down from Tassadar, so they're going to have a much better chance in the next fight once they hit this level 13. Very important talent coming up right now. They're going to have to pick that because right now we do have Hero coming for this keep. And here they come. And we do see a force wall go down here. Puts them out of position. There's a seven-sided strike, though, doing a ton of damage. Darvish gets caught here, and a huge maw goes down. They actually don't capitalize on it, though. Only, a, like, a baneling hit goes off after that. Yeah, St. Tail actually had to jump out of there, so he was unable to stay in that front line and provide some uh, protection here. In the meantime, oh, man, Anka does end up getting blown up in a matter of seconds. Uh, Anka's always on the front line, he's always in good position, but his team not able to back him up there. They will lose a keep. And don't forget that during this, then the other lanes are also being pushed by the Web Weavers. And they're actually just going to rotate out, and I think at these cannon towers in mid. Uh, yeah, they're that... going to hit 16. Yep. Well, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> they're keeping that talent tier advantage, grabbing it once again. 
This is going to give Arcane Barrier to Kael'thas, as well as the Green Combinators are pointing out there, the Observer showing us. So important right now. Yeah, Arcane Barrier, definitely one of those crazy things that Kael'thas has available to him. We do have an Entomb going down here on Swoy, not able to get out, but there's really no capitalization there. Oh god, we actually just saw Overheat go ahead and spread Chain Bomb here onto Coconut Milk. Yeah, and you Ooh. can see how much damage uh, Tassar will take three levels down. His health pool is just not scaled up very high. So even though we don't see like a GP build or anything like that with Kel'thas, I mean, that does a lot of damage percentage-wise versus what um, Tassar's actual health is. And this is uh, starting to be a significant lead here for Hero. Yeah, uh, you know, the fact that they already have a keep down, definitely a big, big deal. They are up a talent, teal, uh, talent tier, another big deal. And these lanes are really well pushed. So they've really got a lot going on for them. But this is definitely one of the maps where you can have nice big comebacks. Certainly. Um, we talked about this a lot yesterday. Some of, it's led to some of the longest games, actually, uh, this season and last season as a result. We see an offensive bruiser camp taken here by Hero, and they are setting up to push this mid fort. Magi jumping into the front because he's actually got a large health pool and he's got seven side strike ready to go. He's going to be the initiator here. Yeah, he might throw that off at any time here. Taking actually quite a bit of damage. Has to be careful. Yeah, that force wall caught him a bit off guard, I would say. But look at that. He heals up already very quickly. Now, this is a good opportunity actually grabbing Magi and Swoy in this Entomb. A great maw to follow it up as well. But there's no damage coming up as a follow-up. So look at this. They, they grab, they have a great initiate, but they can't actually finish things off. Magi now going to go up the front. He's going to seven-sided strike and push everybody back. Chunks of health out of all that, uh, you know, the Lyoric health pool. Oh, and we actually do have a lot of damage being done to D.Va there. And Saint Tail in the meantime, trying to get out of here on Muradin. And a missed stun onto Overheat, but he is going to actually use that Prescience now to survive. Second uh, Ancient Spear and that big wave there from uh, Sonya will finish him off. <laughs> oh, the Owl <laughs> to the kill there on Anka as well. Indeed, a lot of damage being done. Only three heroes left here. And in fact, it looks like, oh my god, even Muradin gets blown up. And they might be able to just go ahead and finish from here. Yep, just going to go ahead and use that heal. Heal everybody up and continue to push. And I think there's no way... <laughs> that uh, Redemption holds this. Mm. That's going to put us into a 2-0 lead for Team Hero.